This machine runs through the night, measuring concentrated pollutants from Narragansett Bay water samples. We don't want the water, we just want what's in the water. Reiner Lohman teaches a course in marine pollution at the University of Rhode Island. He studies organic pollutants in Narragansett Bay, the chemical contents in sediment, where small organisms feed to start the marine food chain. He has found hundreds of pollutants, including the pesticides DDT and PVC, that were banned in the United States 40 years ago. They might be stored in the sediments, but on a nice stormy day, the sediments get swirled up and compounds can be released back into the water column and be taken up by fish. Lohman says every few years, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency checks on the contaminants in fish tissue. Based on that data, government scientists establish safe eating guidelines for different fish. This is from EPA's monitoring surveys and you see concentration of PCBs. The government fish advisories are based on the risk of cancer if you eat fish every day. Lohman says humans can take 20 to 30 years to eliminate the toxics they consume when they eat contaminated fish. And long-term exposure to contaminants and the transfer of toxics from mother to child are major scientific concerns. We can detect these contaminants virtually everywhere. I mean, we've done studies in the Atlantic, Arctic, Pacific, they're everywhere. Other researchers at the University of Rhode Island are studying the effects of warming water temperatures. Candace Oviat has studied the bay for more than 40 years. One degree, you know, it seems like nothing. Um, but if you think back to the last glacial maximum, the change in temperature from that time until now is only 5 degrees centigrade or 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So one degree is huge, and we're seeing huge changes in the bay in consequence of that. Oviat points to an 80 percent increase in rainstorms. This April, large areas of Rhode Island were flooded, overwhelming several water treatment plants. Raw sewage, fertilizers, and urban pollution ran freely into the bay. Well, there's a lot of climate effects, you know, one of the ones you experienced this week, this huge big rainstorm where we got eight inches of rain in three days. Oviat says warmer temperatures in the bay and more rainwater trigger a chain reaction of low oxygen and high levels of nutrients in the water, killing many organisms. The winter flounder had a strategy of laying its eggs in the wintertime. If it lays its eggs in the wintertime, nothing is going to bother the eggs, no predators. But if we heat up the bay waters, then those predators become active and they eat the eggs and they eat the young juvenile winter flounder. Oviat says overfishing and warmer waters have reduced the number of winter flounder by 75 percent. That's led to an end of commercial flounder fishing and a two fish limit on recreational anglers. Yet despite the strains on Narragansett Bay, another University of Rhode Island researcher, Scott Nixon, says the bay is in better shape now than 50 years ago when metals, oils, and waste often were thrown directly into the ocean. Now, there are other concerns. I think most coastal ecologists would probably say that the, the most pervasive, chronic, widespread problem we're dealing with now is nutrient pollution, nitrogen and phosphorus, that comes from uh, agriculture. Nixon says he hopes developing countries learn from our mistakes and stop polluting their coastal areas before more damage occurs. For producer Zulima Palacio, this is Carolyn Pursuti, VOA News.